Good evening. What I want to get into is something that I have been involved in many years. And that's the public ministry. Now, the public ministry, I mean everything from door knocking, handing out gospel tracts, holding signs, opening a Bible with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, speaking to somebody at work or in the grocery store at the barber shop. I'm not limited to the public ministry of street preaching as I've done. Because I've done all kinds. And I've seen this in general today's message. Now, first of all, Mark 16, 15. He said unto him, red letters, go ye in all to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, we're not to preach and invite the church, come to church. Nowhere can you find that. We're going to have a church movie. We're going to have a church fellowship. We're going to have a church raffle. We're going to have a, a church dedication. We're going to have a revival. That, 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 that's nothing. That gets you away from preaching the gospel. You, as a, it's not only the job of your pastor. It's every single Christian's job to preach the gospel. And let's say, okay, let's say you got a Christian that's mute, can't speak. They can pass out gospel tracts. They can pray. There's always something you can do as a Christian to the Lord calls you home. And when we're to preach the gospel, the gospel is in Corinthians. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scripture. There is nothing about all our welcome. There is nothing about face painting. There is nothing about VBS. There is the gospel Christians are to preach. And nothing else. Because when you get the other thing, you get easy believism. You get say this prayer. And you'll get hundreds thousands, hopefully not millions, hose here, that will end up in hell thinking they were saved. We don't want that. I want to see people go to heaven. And I want to see people, if they end up in hell, they know they have rejected Jesus Christ. They were not swindled. They were not deceived in thinking that they are saved by a prayer, by an invitation to church, by a fellowship at church or something. It's the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scripture. That is the gospel Jesus Christ said to preach. Mark 16, I believe, is the great commission. But not the Laodicean church, eh? Because the great commission of Matthew doesn't say preach. And the Laodicean church age doesn't want to preach. I do. I preach many years on the streets from Connecticut to Florida. And right now my health is deteriorating. And I'm praying and asking you to pray with me that God will use me some way, somehow, even on these videos. Now that's the introduction. We are going to go to Matthew. Matthew. And I'm going to spiritualize Matthew 20, verse 30 and 31. And it says in verse 30, And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude, the Jews, ooh, my voice, and the Jews rebuked them. Because they should hold their voice, keep their peace. But they cried even the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. You know what the crowd wants you to do? 
If you're going to raise up and, and invite Jesus, you know what the crowds are going to do? You know what some churches are going to do? Shut up! We don't want to hear about Jesus. Don't you dare bring Jesus into this workplace. Don't you bring Jesus on this bus. Don't you bring Jesus in this neighborhood. Don't you bring Jesus into our family. You keep Jesus in your church. When you shut the doors of your church, you leave Jesus on the other side. Now, there are four aspects of this verse. Now, I have dealt with people in the public ministry. Like I said, I've been in all, all kinds. Number one is the lost people, the unsaved. And I have met many unsaved people street preaching. And you know what? They honor what you're doing. Now, they don't honor that Jesus said go in the world and preach the gospel. You know, what they honor is you, to them, you are practicing your rights. You are standing up for your rights. And actually, I'm not standing up for my rights. I would preach the gospel even if it was illegal somehow, if the Lord called me. There are people today in the world that preach the gospel where it is illegal. And many end up in jail. Many lose their lives. Many are beaten. For the word of God. And there are lost people that say, hey, you got the right in America. God bless you for, for your right. Stand for it. Now, I'm there. Not for my rights. I'm there for Jesus. Jesus said, preach the gospel. So a lot of unsaved people, the aspect of rights and Americanism, hey, that's a pretty good idea you do. I don't believe what you're saying. I don't agree with what you're saying, but for rights, keep on doing it. That's what I've seen. And in general, I've seen unseen people, they just walk by me. He's doing what he's doing, we do what they're doing, they do what they're doing, we're happy. You know? There's many people I've preached. And my eyeballs have focused, and many I don't even see with my eyeball. And they just move on. They don't say nothing. They don't even look at me. Oh, I'm screaming loud, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And they just walk on. Sometimes somebody will give me the finger, or somebody will make some comment, but, you know, pretty much the lost people are like, He's doing his thing. He can do his thing for rights, and I can do my thing is right. And the, and the object is that is you can swing your fist all you want, just don't hit my nose. You know, uh, I put a fence up on my yard for a reason. That's your side. This is my side. Don't cross it. That's the attitude. And then we got the other attitude. You got the religious. And I can tell you uh, when there's a Catholic woman. Because a Catholic woman will walk up to me or be somewhere on the street, somewhere else on the sidewalk, on the street, where I'm preaching, and they will be the ones that say, Shut up! Stop kicking my chair. Stop saying stuff about the Pope. Stop saying, and listen, I haven't said anything about the Catholic Church yet. <laughs> you open up your mouth, I'm going to start saying things. Because I preach the gospel. I don't kick until somebody wants to be kicked. And they come to me, we'll say, I'm an atheist. Okay, here I go. I'm going to say something about atheism. I'm a Catholic. I'm going to say something about Catholicism. Nobody says anything. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ, how to be saved, heaven, and there's a hell. And there are religious people. We we have what I call here as a Jehovah Witness compound. I, every once in a while, they get all together in this one area. I guess from all over the Florida, I don't know. And we've been outside their gates, and we've held signs, and I preached. And I got a video. And I started walking up. They have a gate, and they lock this gate. 
So I started walking up to the gate where the guy was, and he goes, Hey, stop! I'll call the police! I got the video. Well, wait a minute. You come to my door. You knock on my door. You knock on the doors of my neighborhood. And you have the nerve to say you're going to call the police, Mr. J.W., kind of uh, hypocritical. And you will find religion. And they're religious. They'll get very uh, unhappy with you. And they will falsify and say you are kicking their God. They will prove lies about you. I had one guy get up and say, you know, I was preaching against the Jeho uh, against Jews, and I'm preaching against this and that. Listen, I told I told the police officer, listen, officer, if you, if you go look at my finances, you will see that my checkbook gives money to missionaries and work to the Jewish people. The Jewish people are God's people, according to the Bible. I wouldn't be preaching against them. Genesis chapter 12 says, if I curse the Jews, I'm going to get a curse. I, I don't do that. So, you got the unsaved, and you got the religious, and they're, they're the ones that are going to fight you. And the Mohammedans will come up, you know, proclaim that, you know, Allah is a God. And, and, you know, and I've heard them change the whole entire Bible where they will put uh, Ishmael instead of Isaac. And, and listen, the Bible says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they get all upset. And the true Jewish race is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No Ishmael. No Hamite. And they'll get upset with you. And he'll begin to tell you, shut up. Again, we have Jehovah Witnesses. They called the cops on us one time, and they didn't want us there. And we, we were saying this and that. We were, uh, I said, officer, we, got, we do videotaping. I can give you the link. I can have you examine the video afterwards. What I said about the Jehovah Witness, I can prove it. I can give you many videos and many books and many resources about how they are cults. I'm not blessed. I'm only saying Jehovah Witness because they're, they're over there. I got a whole day plan. I'm going to be preaching the gospel. And they got all mad and they packed up and left. So, religious. Religion will get mad at you and will want you to shut up. They will call the police. And they have. For many of the years that we preach here in Daytona Beach, we had a police officer tell us that the 911 switchboard every Saturday when we preach would get phone calls. Every Saturday we were there, someone would call 911 on us. I guarantee they're religious. I don't think they're not unsaved. They wouldn't care. The unsaved would say, you know, he's, he's going to finish. He's not going to preach 24 hours for seven days a week. And I do things that, you know, I'm allowed. The religion wants to shut the Bible down. They want to shut Christians up. And you're not going to know that if you don't get involved in public ministry. Any public ministry. You want to know how, where your co-workers stand as far as religion and all that? Tell them about Jesus. See how quick it gets to the boss. I thought it was funny when I worked at one place. Every time I left the gospel track out, it would end up in the boss's office. That man has died. I hope he's believed on Jesus. 
But, you know, you got to have as a Christian, if I can add as a side note, with no expenses, the fact is, you got to have a clean living. You got to live right. You got to do right. You got to have a testimony as a Christian. Number three, we'll break into two, is the saved. You're going to get saved people, and they want you to go away. Yes. Honest. Because they don't witness. Their church doesn't witness. Maybe their pastor doesn't preach the gospel. Maybe they don't preach the blood. Maybe they have a salvation by water. Maybe they have a salvation by works. They do not have the gospel. They are ashamed of the gospel. They may proclaim to be saved and actually are lost. So out of conviction of what you're doing for Jesus, which is right, their testimony that they are saved, and if they're saved, the Holy Spirit says, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. them." And you say, no, no, no. And you come across somebody at work says, hey, listen, can I tell you about Jesus Christ? Go away. I'm already saved. I let my light shine. The love of Christ flows through me. I let my light. But they don't witness. I had one time somebody said, oh, I let my light shine. I said, when's the last person you told somebody that Jesus Christ saved? You told them the gospel. I let my love show. I didn't say your love. You may be a very loving person, but did you tell someone about Jesus? There was no answer. So I'm going to assume the answer is no. Oh, I'm saved. And then I have I have had Christians say, professing Christians, I don't believe you're doing it right. You are turning people away. So in what form of do you tell people about Jesus? Well, you know, we have fellowship, but while you're eating chicken or macaroni salad or whatever you are you talking about Jesus? No. While you're face painting the children as as Jezebel wore makeup on her face, you telling them about Jesus? No, you're telling them about a watered gent down Jesus. You're telling them about a lad to see Jesus that doesn't say. Well, I think you should keep it in the church. No, Jesus said go in all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus said go out into the world, not in the church. The church was never buildings. Countries like uh, 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 Korea and all that. You're not going to find church buildings. You're not going to find church buildings in China. You're to go out into the communist people and risk your life. You're to go out onto the Indians. You're to go out onto the Africans. You're to go out to the Americans and to the Mexicans and tell them about Jesus. I'm standing on the sidewalk, on the side of a street, at a farmer's market. I'm proclaiming Jesus Christ, and they're like, take it somewhere else. Get out of here. Shut up, like these Jews did. These Jews are brethren, I would assume, to the blind men. And these Christians that profess to be Christian would be brethren with me. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm calling out Jesus. They say, hold your peace. Not so loud. I had another woman profess to be a Christian. That's not what my pastor would do. I said, for shame. I said, have your pastor read. Again, Mark 16. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. 
I've even had preachers come up and rebuke me. Shame! I had one preacher get all upset because Sunday morning we skipped church to go to the Daytona 500 and preach and get gospel tracts out. And I mean Daytona 500. We were on the street, on the sidewalk, outside Daytona. We didn't go to the races. We went to all the people going in. And the preacher was upset that we missed his message. Man, you know how many gospel tracts got out? You know how many people heard preaching? The police got to hear it. Because what I would do is we were in an area where the police were crossing the, the, the people. And when the cops let the people cross the road, I, I'd get a drink of water, sit down for a moment. When he starts building up a crowd again, I'll start preaching. My family would get gospel tracts out. And then when, again, when he lets the, when he lets the people cross the street, i go back and sit down. Get a drink, and when he got another group of people, I start preaching again. Yeah, I do that for maybe about six hours. I tell you, my voice was gone. I used to knock on doors. Some people, you know, they were in the house, but they wouldn't answer. They know why you're there. And then number five, <clears throat> there are Christians out there. Glory to God, they love what you're doing. They are thrilled to death. And they will tell you, uh, we had one woman come up to me, she says, hey, she passes out these gospel tracts in, uh, I believe it was hotels. She goes in hotels and leaves all kinds of gospel tracts. Amen, glory to God to her. I probably got her name in my in my prayer book. And we will meet people and say, hey, you know, we hold out signs. We meet, uh, hey, listen, you know, I hold an open Bible. I know somebody who goes goes to Walmart passing out gospel tracts. And besides, well, right now, the way of my health and all that, I have ways of passing out gospel tracts. I can't go on the street right now. I'm praying the Lord for things I can do. More so, even so. Listen, gospel tracts, you can't speak, you're afraid. Gospel tracts are the best thing. Leave them somewhere where they're going to read. Put a tip in it for the the waitress or the waiter. Leave them in public bathrooms. You can witness. But number one, you got to study to show thyself approved unto God. You got to get in your Bible and you got to read your Bible. You got to study your Bible. You got to pray. You got to preach the gospel and not nonsense. You got to be ready to give an answer when somebody calls upon you. And you can't come up with an answer that that you make believe. You call upon the scholars of the time. No, you can't be afraid to say, I don't know. Give me your information, I'll look it up and I'll give you I'll give you the answer when and possibly if I can. But plain and simple comes to the fact that you must preach the gospel. If you don't, you're not going to face Jesus well done. You won't. Don't expect rewards for not preaching the gospel. That plain and simple. 